<clears throat> we've had more than one people, uh, more than one people point out you really ought to learn the English language. Uh, <laughs> More than one correspondent has pointed out that, um, that uh, listen, you guys bring up problems a lot in the hypocrisy and the waste and the abuse and the California crumbling. Oh, my God, this email. I got tears in my eyes from, um, from Leslie, uh, a native Californian. This is home. It's so corrupt, diminished, overly regulated. I'm so sad and disgusted. It used to be the place where people dreamed of. Best schools in the country. Opportunity to thrive in business. Imagination. Energy. And now, and then she goes on to describe it in terms we often use. Yeah. And it is it's too damn bad. Can you imagine moving here from another country and you've heard your whole life about America, land of the free, the free country, free. And you hear the national anthem. Oh, yeah. Maybe you maybe you, 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 you hear it when you first move here. The land of the free, home of the free. And then you buy a house, a house. You own your own home. And you have to get a permit to put it in an alarm system or a permit to put a little shed in your backyard. Right. You, the Think, government what? has to permit you. So, but the question comes... You know, once in a while, it's not a drumbeat, but we get it once in a while. What what should we do? Fight it. Well, fight it. Fight it. Fight it. Fight it. But yes, yes, but yes. How? So no, just, no, no. I, I want to spend a couple of minutes talking about how you can fight it. Fight um, it. One eight six six three three one. Talk. Jack's got the uh, the the text, so we can look at those as well. I'll tell you one thing. I had a, a really interesting conversation with a young man. He's a Ph.D. guy at, uh, at a university in this great country. He's doing his Ph.D. project on the history of and significance of talk radio and politics. And I talked to him for an hour yesterday, and we just chatted at the end of our uh, doing business. And he mentioned it's really interesting because he teaches classes um, that in so many of his classes, he can't get the young men and women to engage in disagreement because they are so afraid of offending each other no, no, no. they are so conditioned that if you've offended somebody you've done something bad where does that come and from merely disagreeing with somebody can offend them well i uh, you know I in the world of cable news where everybody screams at each other where does that come from well that's what's fascinating about it but we all know that the victim is the highest class in america and that if you're wrong you bellow that somebody was a racist or a sexist or whatever and you sue blah 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 and um and or, and I think it's it's a different symptom of the same thing, people immediately go to vicious personal attacks online. Fight it! Right. And, and so people are so afraid of being politically incorrect, they're afraid to argue a point because they don't want to be that offensive, belligerent person who dares disagree. And I will tell you, Californians, there's a fair amount of truth to the, you know, live in New York, but leave before you're too hard. Live in California, Northern California, leave before you're too soft. People are afraid to offend to an extent in California. I mean, good people. I mean, sons of bitches will say awful things constantly, and in a way I admire them. But if you think you're good, honest Marin County, Berkeley, Davis, the the, the heart of every city in California, nanny state-loving, compassionate, big government people are going to be offended when you point out that those people are wasting my money and you're a sap for believing it. Maybe don't call them a sap, but but you're a coward if you're afraid of offending them. Go ahead and say it. I would say that is step number one. Say what you believe. It's your money. For God's sake, if you're not willing to defend your money, you're a limprist. But I want to take some more suggestions before I get to some of mine. one 331 talk uh, It's Vicki in Cameron Park. Vicki, talk to us. Um, hi, and thank hi. you for having me on. I listen sure. to you every day. It's my first time I've called. Oh, terrific. Uh, Welcome. The fire fee that was discussed yesterday with Jarvis um, was where I took my stand because I have no other power. But when I, I live in a rural community, we're called rural because I'm on five acres in Cameron Park. But they also called across the way on the freeway, third acre owners are also called rural and need extra fire protection. We pay $180. Oh, yeah, we understand the issue. Get to what to do about it. What to do about it is exactly what I did, was f- find out how I filed a petition. And it got the attention of Jarvis because there's 800,000 homeowners times whatever that fee was. Okay? That's where you have to fight it. That's so in only- general, would you say, uh, don't lay down, fight it yourself, and, and support the various taxpayer organizations? Absolutely. It okay. actually did right. some good. Yeah. 
Okay, yep. yeah, we're making headway in that, so that's good. Find those organizations. You know, obviously, register and vote Libertarian or, well, the Republicans are just useless. But, um, you know, understand what politicians are in favor of what and vote that way. I realize that that feels small, and I'm willing to, to, to you know, take on a bigger plan than that. But I want to want to hear from you what to do about it. Uh, it's Jay in Sacto. Hey, Jay, go ahead. Jay, are you there? I think he was no, no, say, no. I think he was going to say we should host town hall meetings. Uh, that's interesting. You know, we do uh, appear at a fair number of Tea Party meetings and, and rally the folks. Uh, it's kind of preaching to the choir. Right. Uh, Kemper and Vallejo. Kemp, go ahead, Bob. Well, first of all, when you're speaking about correct English, it's not you all, it's you's all. So please use that correct English. <laughs> My apologies. Okay. Uh, you're right. You've got to register libertarian, and I'm going to explain why. Because everybody's pandering to these Hispanics because they are an easily recognizable, significant group with a common interest. The trouble with libertarians is, is we're, we're invisible. Uh, and to become visible, you've got to register as a libertarian, and then it might help. It's got to be a lot of people doing it, but the problem is... You know, I need to do that. I'm, I'm not registered as anything. I need to register as a libertarian. Can you do that online, Kemp? I don't know, but it's, it's you know, if you go to the library, if you go to the post office, there's that's, when you go to the welfare office, Jeff, right they almost force you to register. So, okay. Um, All right, very good. And, to do. Okay. So, you know, we have like 40% of the state is independent. That doesn't mean anything. It means I don't care or I don't know or I don't stand for anything. You've got to stand for something. And when you stand for libertarian, it doesn't mean you want to legalize heroin. It means you want smaller government, lower taxes. That's what it means. I'm going to do that today, damn it. And if, and if we had 30% libertarian registration in the state, somebody like Tim the lawyer, who doesn't want to run for office, would submit his name as a candidate, and just by participating. If you had Tim the lawyer, a three-way between Mitt Romney and, and Obama... Sounds hot. Romney a three-way with Tim the Romney lawyer, Mitt won. Romney, and Barack Obama. I don't swing that way, Tim but I appreciate the thought. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I like the and, brown and, sugar in there. It really and, adds to it. And, and, oh, for God's sake. Um, and did, are you in favor of that... Uh, what's the second-choice voting system? Yeah. Well, they call it ranked voting. It's, right. it, 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 it's an instant runoff is the other thing. That's the other thing. It, it, you know, when, when we had the replacement of uh, Gray Davis... Nobody had the guts to vote for McClintock because they were afraid that they would split the vote between Schwarzenegger. What they should have done is rank people by how many votes they got, and then if it turns out that Schwarzenegger uh, 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 eliminates from the bottom up with all the little has-beens and losers, but, but also if, the, the vote, right. if it's you end up with a maid humper. And Bush, yes, and and and, and all the pro voters default to Bush, then Bush wins, which he would have won in California right. back in '92. Right, I hear you. Okay, <laughs> worth considering. All right, Kemp, thanks, man. Um, that would make a difference, though. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, uh, that that the, either political party probably ain't going to be the Democrats would have to take into their platform the the thoughts of that big percentage chunk out there that is libertarian right and you know i am willing to pander to y'alls if you want us with bullhorns uh screaming and 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 doing that sort of thing you know if that'll raise the ratings i'll do it um that's not really kind of the show i'd prefer to do honestly but um but i'm not sure that would do a lot of good i i would like to help you and i would like to help us find a way to actually do some damage and, and you know what I mean by that. Although there are days I think axe handles uh, uh, coming down on the Capitol are a great idea. I don't suggest you do it. Just think it out loud here. All right, one eight six six three three one talk All our contact info is at armstrongandgettyradio.com. Text line 1415-295-KFTC. Just figured out how to change your registration. Hit you with that next. You're listening to the Armstrong and Getty Show. Uh, so, uh, listen, we tell the truth, we try to draw your attention to it, but some of y'all want to, what do we do? What do we do about all the the bloated government and uh, the, the waste and the nanny laws and the, what should we, what's, what's the solution? Offer us solutions! Fight it! Don't come to me with problems, uh, um, Schmedkovich, come to me with solutions! That's what the CEO says to you, right? Cabin in the woods. Oh, Off boy. grid. I'm telling you, that's a solution for me. Pit bulls and shotguns. One eight six six and pit bulls with shotguns. One eight six six three three one talk. One eight six six three three one eight two five five. Get get a German Shepherd. Teach a, a, a pit bull to ride it and have it patrol your property. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you do like Mr. Burns. You have dogs and bees and dogs with bees in their mouths. So when they bark, they shoot bees out of their mouths. One eight six six three three one talk. What to do? Do we do we hold? Uh, uh, do we we bellow through bullhorns? Do we? What do we? What what what? It's Jeff and Vallejo. Hey, Jeff, welcome. How are you, sir? Uh, good morning. Good to talk to you again. Thank you. Fire I've been on your show a few times. Terrific. Uh, I'm a fourth generation Californian, and it really breaks my heart to see what Daryl Steinberg and Jerry Brown and several others in Sacramento are doing. Just think, fourth generation. That means your great 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 grandfather r- rode a slow moving train across the state, and your great great grandson will ride the bullet train at the same speed across the state. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, in what century? <laughs> yeah, we, right, and, and at the cost of hundreds of billions of dollars. Anyway, Jeff, so what's on your mind? Well, I think business leaders in California need to come together and stage a convention to come up with the 10 most important solutions to making California business-friendly once again, and then send these to the legislature and advertise them throughout the state so the public can put pressure on the state legislature to act on these recommendations. And if they don't act, then we've got something to point to and say, that you're failing to come up with the way to make California work once again. I'm afraid you're you're putting too much stock in the uh, willingness of the average voter to engage and pay attention. Well, that's um, part of the problem, isn't the oh my God, in this yeah. state? People people want that handout, but they don't want to turn around and, and get these people out of the legislature who are ruining California. Well, and these feel good arguments that aren't good enough to dupe a. You know, I almost said something highly unfortunate. Um, they they they're not they're not persuasive enough to fool anybody into doing anything. Work great in California because people go by their feelings so much. But that's exactly right. All right, yeah. Jeff. I like that idea though. For business leaders really really ought to present a, a more united front. Um, Somebody texted how to uh, change your registration. Well, it's actually it's a, yeah, you change your registration or register. If you want to do it libertarian, you go to sos.ca.gov slash elections slash elections line vr dot html. Oh, just just Google uh, California Secretary of State. But I, you know, I hope I hope it's easy to find. I was at a website the other day trying to figure out a, a form that they said was listed, and I could not in a million years figure out what page that was on. But hopefully, in this case, it's easy. Yeah, uh, I think I've got it just by going to the California. Yeah, register to vote now. Can you change it? Change um, your registration? Theoretically, yes. I'll click on it. Why not? What does it cost? Nothing. Um, to be, yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good.